Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. We know what's going on here. It's referring to the, the emperor, who we mustn't, you know, criticise publicly. And then funnily enough, in another gospel, in the same place, you get the same comment, let the reader understand. Now, to my mind, maybe have a, a better explanation. This means that someone is copying because Jesus didn't say the words, let the reader understand. This is something that the writer has put in to, to, to his readers. Oi, look. We're just saying here to this uh, Christian gentleman who says that the law has been abolished because you can't obey the law, you can't be righteous under the law, and as the Apostle Paul said, if righteousness was possible under the law, then Christ died for nothing. And I agree with Paul, that is true. The only problem is, the New Testament says that righteousness was possible under the law. Here we have Luke chapter 1 verse 6, it's talking about Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. Both of them, it says in Luke's Gospel, were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the law. So under the law, these people were blameless and righteous before God. Therefore, according to the logic of the Christians, there was no requirement for Jesus to die. And do you know I agree there was no requirement for Jesus to die, because God is merciful and gracious in Islam as he was for Jesus. So they, they, are, they have a contradiction in their Bible, and he's, he's not really answering it. So I just want to explain that. But declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the countryside of Judea. It's not really relevant. Yeah. So um, the point That's is, he, he does. When, when, sorry, Acts 26, verse 19. When he's addressing King Agrippa towards the end, he actually says that it was a vision. Now, I, I do agree with this gentleman here that having a vision of someone and knowing them in, in life is completely different. Lots of people have visions of Mary. It doesn't mean they knew her in the first century. They, they have a vision. Uh, other people can't see it. In one of the accounts here, Paul has a vision of Jesus and no one else sees it. No, that's what well, you're not. Yep. That, that, that's in not one of the accounts. That's still tea. Okay. Okay. Well, that accounts. is absolutely correct. In so one of the accounts. Okay, so why do you not take all three accounts? Why do you say. Uh, which one is true? All three. No, they can't be true. Why because in one not? account, people hear something. In another account, they don't hear, but they see. In another account, they don't see, but they hear. No, they, no they, they contradict each other. So no, there's no contradiction. Not you're, much you're, you're, are you. So can I ask a question? Are you saying he physically met him in real life or not? I'm saying it's a. He has a, vi a vision. vision. He says he the, way, a vision. the way it's portrayed is like he had a vision almost like in his sleep, yeah. and there's nothing going on so, around it to so corroborate it. You're clear on the fact that he never physically met him like we're meeting right now? No, yeah. no until, of course, until after his, after he his resurrection and ascension, yes. But what I'm saying is, I don't doubt he had a vision when, sometime. when his people say that Paul had a vision, it's used to say, oh, he had a vision, it's probably in his sleep. We no, can't I never trust him. I never mentioned that's, sleep. That's the way it's on the road to Damascus, that's he was the way awake. He's so just to, just to clarify, sorry, one, one last question. Prior to his resurrection and after his resurrection, Paul never physically met him. That's what I'm saying. No. Okay, that's fine. 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 That
much safe so much to find something yeah. from the mouth of Jesus Christ confirming your beliefs. Because I, I don't see anything anyway in the Bible where he actually confirms those statements which you take as part of your theology in terms of uh, how, how to be justified before God. That's what it is. Well, I, I also say you. Part of the law that we, we have that we haven't talked about, not just keeping the, the commandments, but also you have the sacrificial part of the law. Because the reason that you have the sacrifice such as the Day of Atonement was that the was to atone for the people's sins. So if you could that's what it's about. Can I just say something about that? It's interesting in Acts the disciples carry on going to the sacrificial uh, rites in the temple. They didn't believe that Jesus had died for their sins and thereby abolishing the temple sacrifices. They could, the new Acts says they continued to attend the temple sacrifices. So that, that this again contradicts Paul's understanding that Jesus was a, a sacrifice once and for all for all sins. Uh, that they carried on uh, going to the temple and participating in the sacrificial rites. It's according to Acts chapter 3. So that, again that's a problem for well, those... Just uh, like they went up into the temple because the temple then, then they had... That's when they healed the lame man. It, it, says, it says they went up in the third hour, which is the hour of sacrifice. It's a very specific point. We know that they attended the sacrificial rites as good Jews. They carried on uh, obeying the law. J James, Jesus' brother, who was the head of the church for, for decades, was famous for being a Torah observant Jew. He went into the temple to sacrifice as well, according to Josephus, an independent Jewish historian who was a contemporary at that time. But Paul, of course, uh, rejected all that. That's why even the New Testament bears witness to the schism between James and his followers, head of the church, and Paul, who was seen as an apostate, a troublemaker with a different gospel. Where would you go for that? Uh, uh, Galatians I'm chapter one, for example, where um, Paul, Paul, Paul goes, up, goes up to Peter. And, and men, uh, men, he says, men came from, men came from James to try and stop uh, Peter from eating with the Jews. Oh, we have to look it up. Chapter three or four. Um, uh, well, and chapter one, because Paul there boasts that he didn't get the gospel, he received it directly from heaven. He didn't get it from uh, any uh, of the so called pillars, he calls them uh, Peter, jo uh, John, and James. We can, we can read through it and go have a Bible study now. But, um, yeah, but, but you made a point, I'd like to actually see the well, quote. Okay. Well, we can, we can look it up when you go home. Okay. It's, there, it's there in, in Galatians. Right, so, uh, I, I just wanted to emphasise that as far as Jesus abolishing the law... Just tell us where it's called, so you can't read on the contrary, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. According to Matthew, he, he says the opposite. No, fulfill, well, yes, what he no but fulfilled doesn't mean abolish. I didn't, didn't say that fulfilled means abolish. No, I'm saying it doesn't mean abolish. I'm not saying it doesn't mean abolish. Well, we both agree with each other. Yeah, Hall hallelujah, we all agree. But let's be clear. Let's go home. Yeah, we can go all go home. home. <laughs> so let's see at the end of his ministry how, what Jesus told the crowds and his disciples about what they should do about the law. This is the end of Jesus' ministry, chapter 23 in Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, it's about the law, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit on Moses' seat, i.e. they teach the law, yeah? Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. So they say, put the adulterer to death, you must agree to it. If they say, execute the apostate, do it. If they say, do not eat pork, you don't, you don't eat pork, obviously. But, he says, and this is the big important part, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They're hypocrites, they don't follow their own teaching. Yep. So Jesus is emphasizing the obedience to the law. And then again, towards the end of this chapter, in verse 23, and this is a subtle point, but it really bears, it really confirms what Jesus is saying. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Without neglecting the others. So you've got to obey, you remember faith, mercy, justice, love, but don't forget the others. In other words, he's not doing what Paul says. Now he's saying, love God and love your neighbor, and this is the whole of the law. He's saying even the smallest parts of the law. Okay. That's what Paul uh, does. That's, that's his headline law now. You're not obeying the, the food laws, for example. Uh, Paul says don't abolish, uh, don't follow them. And Paul says in, in Ephesians 2.15 that all of the commands and regulations of the law have been abolished. Jesus, though, is saying 
obey, uh, uh, do faith, justice, mercy, uh, but do not neglect the smaller matters of the law as well. Here is a Torah observant Jew, and this is what historians today, if you go to any historian, mainstream historians, Oxford and Cambridge, they all agree that Jesus was a Torah observant Jew, upheld the law and taught others to maintain the law. But Christianity has abandoned Jesus' teaching, abandoned his religion, and now has a law-free religion, which is very unlike Judaism, and unlike Islam. Islam and Judaism are so similar, it's very often hard to tell the difference between them. Very, very hard to tell the difference. Other than the sacrificial, what, so you said there's no difference between them. Why is it that the Jews have the sacrifices and Islam doesn't? Well, because you misunderstand, well, Christians misunderstand the role of sacrifices in Judaism. If you look at the, uh, the detailed prescriptions in Leviticus about why there were sacrifices, there were sacrifices for Thanksgiving, they were sacrifices for, for, uh, um, for a good harvest and so on. But the sin offerings were for a very, for, for a very particular class of sin, usually inadvertent, unintentional sin. They weren't for your everyday sins at all. How do you get forgiveness? You repented to God, and that's where Islam agrees. But Christianity introduces a novelty, unheard of, and that is a human being has to be cruelly tortured to death on a cross, and only then, when a price has been paid, will God uh, be, will allow himself to forgive you. This is, uh, this is contrary to the teaching of the Torah, contrary to the teaching of Islam, the, uh, the Quran, uh, uh, the Christianity is the odd one out here. So, so didn't answer the question. I'm saying is, why is it that you, you're saying they're so similar? You, you agree yes. that they, you have such things that they have atonement in, Jew, in the Jewish scriptures, yes? If they're so similar, why is that not carried on into Islam? Well, the, law, the, 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 uh, the temple has been uh, destroyed. The AD 70 by the Romans, that, uh, and we, now we have the final messengers of all mankind, not just to the Jews. Jesus says, "I'm only sent to the lost sheep in the house of Israel. He wasn't sent for you. You're, you're all for us." Uh, Matthew chapter 15. Yeah, he says that 15. Uh, you ask me a question, am I saying you're no, no, nothing? No, right? yeah, so, so the difference no, is that Muhammad now said he sends a mercy to all mankind. Therefore, any previous uh, detailed regulations are now abrogated. Uh, the temple is destroyed. It's an opera. It's an opera for thousands of years. Yeah. So, so, now, so now forgiveness, just as Jesus taught, is available through repentance. Think of the term of the Mount, the, the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. There's no mention of it. Of a well, that, that would be nice if that was the only thing Jesus ever said on the subject. If we were to take everything that Jesus said to the subject, such as the Son of Man not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life for the right of man. As he says in the Luke, 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 Luke. So I can prove, I can prove to you that New Testament writers have rejected that teaching. I can prove it, I can prove it for your life now. See, this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem with your methodology. You're, you're, you're saying, okay, the law has this, so it said this, but yeah, you said at the start, we have to take the writer in the context you're writing. You now just contradict yourself, because now you want to say, well, the, the writer said this, but he, although the writer says that and he's communicating that, we can't take what he says seriously. So either you want to take what the writer says seriously, or you don't. I don't think you realize you just contradict yourself. What I'm saying is, like, like the issue of the law, where Matthew is Jesus, and Paul's the law, Mark Jesus. Don't with, with, the, with the, the meaning and purpose of Jesus says, Mark 10, 45, that's what I'm saying, the game of the rest of the yes it does, but Luke, see, I'm accepting the standard scholarly model here. Well, hold on, hold on, standard no, scholarly model, I'm stopping, what's the standard scholarly model? Okay, can I explain the standard scholarly model? If you haven't trusted me, I'm explaining it, the irony of what you're doing. You're interrupting me, I'm just making the standard scholarly model is accepted by virtually everyone. I mean, you could be wrong, not, not like revelation God, but it's this, that the earliest Gospel is Mark, and Matthew and Luke use Mark in the writing of their own Gospels. They edited and changed and, uh, and uh, corrected, I would argue, Mark in important details. Uh, but, and also Matthew and Luke use Q, this source. Uh, Q is well, in German, is source. Uh, to write their own gospels, and they use other sources as well. Why is this important? If you accept the standard scholarly model, which I do, I've looked at it in detail, I find it very persuasive. Well, it's, it's a theory, you realise? It's a theory, yeah. It's a theory. So, so, a theory. so, so what we're going with we have is theory. So it's theoretical that it's possible that Mark and Matthew are copying from, sorry, Matthew and Luke are copying from Mark. It's theoretical that Mark comes first. It's theoretical that, well, it's, it's a theory, it's not something you can document. So you can, can you document that they have 
evidence that we know Matthew was copying from Steve Mark. We know it's a, it's a theory. Now, it's a theory proposed by many scholars, many scholars that have a worldview different to you and I as Muslims, as far as the use of Muslim as a Christian, we don't get the worldview for them, but it's a theory. It's, it's not much of a thing. Let me respond to that. It is a theory, but it is an expert and hypothesis which scholars have looked at many possible explanations the rice back hypothesis, the idea of Matthew is first, the idea of Luke is first, and so on. They've looked at it, they sifted through it, they did this scholarly literature over the, over the, over the last couple of generations. The, the, now the consensus having sifted through all these various models, because what is clear, and I haven't mentioned this, maybe I should have done, is that it's clear at the level of the Greek, the, the Gospels themselves, someone is copying from someone else. You can see copying going on. How can you, I can demonstrate this in English, actually. It's, it's that clear. So Mark and Matthew, uh, we have what's called the Olivet Discourse. So that's Mark 13, Matthew 24. And this is where Jesus um, and the disciples go to the Jerusalem temple and the, uh, and the disciples say, wow, look at the temple, isn't it amazing? I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus says, not one of these stones will be left standing on another. And then Jesus goes on a long speech about the end times and earthquakes and the false messiah and then the end will, uh, the temple will be destroyed and then the end will come and the parousia and the Son of Man will return. So you, get, you get it in Mark and you get it in Matthew, you get it in Luke 21 as well. But just get take Mark and Matthew for a second. For a bit of Halfway through Mark 13, you get an interesting statement in parenthesis in, in your Bible. It says, let the reader understand. This is in reference to the constantly the desolating statue that was put there by the Roman Empire. In the temple, it actually happened. Uh, in the, uh, I forget which was it Titus? It talks about the, the, the desolating um, sacrilege that took place in the temple. Historians know this refers to the emperor. I forget who it was. Was it Titus who actually put uh, a, a, a statue in, inside the temple, which is, which is obviously a great offence. Um, and after that uh, obscure reference, it says, "Let the reader understand." And it says that in Mark, and in the same passage, it says it again in Matthew. Let the reader understand. Wow, look at that. Now, what, we do, what we've got here is we have Jesus speaking. He goes on and on, the temple, blah, blah, blah. Let the reader understand. Uh, no, because he's not addressing readers, he's addressing his disciples. So in Mark, the, the, the evangelist has added this, saying, let the reader understand. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. We know what's going on here. It's referring to the, the emperor, who we mustn't, you know, criticise publicly. And then funnily enough, in another gospel, in the same place, you get the same comment, let the reader understand. Now, to my mind, maybe have a, a better explanation. This means that someone is copying because Jesus didn't say the words, let the reader understand. This is something that the writer has put in to, to, to his readers. Oi, look, pay attention here. But they've both done that in the same place. This suggests to me at the level of the Greek, they're copying, one person is copying someone else. And the, uni, uni, the near universal view today, for really good reasons, is that Matthew is copying Mark. Because at the level of the Greek, it's identical wording. But the, the problem you have with that is... What's the problem with that? The problem I can say is you can say yes to, to someone say, OK, that's on some things, Matthew uses Mark as a reference. I have no problem with that, but when you... Oh, look, good. But, well, then we agreed then. Uh, can I finish my... OK. I, I didn't realise you'd agree with me, basically. No, in some... <laughs> uh, when I say... The comment that now that's Jesus declared all foods clean is missing from Matthew. Are you saying it's exactly the same as that, or it's different? Because well, we'd have to look at the passages in more detail to confirm what's really going on, exactly what's going on. But, 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 but the, the point is that the, the, it's called reduction criticism. I, and, I well, let, let me explain. It's not as, people are saying it's simple as if it has a simple answer. In my view, it doesn't have a simple answer. It's like saying, what's the meaning of life? Come on, it's a simple question. Simple life, give me a simple life. Or, or well, what's quantum mechanics like? Come on, it's a simple question. Quantum mechanics, it's a simple question. I mean, some things are not simple. The question may be simple in English, but the answer may refer to a very complex and involved reality. So don't, don't, you're trying to get one over me by saying it's simple, it's not simple, it's complicated. Now let me answer, let, let, will, you let, will you let me respond now please? Now let me respond. I, 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 I haven't looked at this in a lot of detail, and scholars do this all the time. They have noticed that Luke has a certain way of explaining the life of Jesus. Jesus' life is not a sacrifice for sin. It's not an atonement for sin. In Luke, it just isn't. If you look at how we're saved, hang on a second, a good question. 
He, according to Luke, he dies as a martyr because the Jews rejected him. That they uh, and actually says that as well at the beginning of uh, in, in several places in Acts as well that he died because uh, he was rejected by his people. He was a martyr. It doesn't say anywhere in Luke Acts that Jesus was an atonement for sin, a sacrifice for sin. Now he does say that. I agree with you in Mark and Matthew, and of course Paul says that all over the place. Now, why doesn't he say in Luke? Because Luke uses Mark, and Mark says it. But the conclusion is that when he gobbles up Mark and edits it, he's edited out, he's deleted, as an editor does, redacts, to use the jargon, that verse, which is incompatible with his own understanding of Jesus' ministry. That's what Luke has done. Also, Matthew has done this with Mark because he disagrees with Mark's declaration, thus he declares all foods clean. Because Mark's, Matthew's Jesus says, you must obey all of the law, even the jot or tittle. So what we have here, and this is the, the, it's interesting there are corollaries of this, there are implications of this. What this means actually is that Matthew and Luke did not regard Mark as inspired word of God because they regarded it as something to be corrected and altered and edited when they disagreed with it. So this is so important. So Mark is not the inspired word of God for other New Testament writers because they saw fit to change Mark because they, it was wrong on these two particular occasions. That's an interesting corollary or consequence of this observation. It also means that we can't just go to the Gospels and get history because the, 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 history, the, the Gospel writers are writing their own particular understanding according to their own views about who Jesus was. According to Luke, Jesus didn't die as a, a sacrifice for sin. According to Mark, he did, which, which is true, which is right. According to Luke, did Jesus have to, have to suffer? Yes, he had to suffer as, as, as a martyr, but not as a well, sacrifice for sin. We need a concordance. Uh, we need to look it up. Okay. I'm not a walking encyclopedia, dude. Anyway, if you're going to make, <laughs> you're going to make points, you'd actually be able to demonstrate where they are. No, I, I do that. I, for example, you, you think that, but I'm not. I'm not doing that for you. Because what, what I'm doing is... You're, you're making one thing. You're making because points. I've read all these before. Yes, I, but I haven't. So you're talking about... You can make claims, but if it's the person you're making claims to, you have to say, demonstrate. For example, going back to Mark 10... We can look it up now. We can look it up now if you want. It says that he's a, uh, that, that he's a man and what, what, what the gospel that Peter's in the earlier chapters of Acts I don't know the exact reference I've read it many times I, I don't have a photographic memory but I've read it many times in my life so he in Acts he, he said perhaps you can perhaps my friend here can look at the passage we can look so, at it then so, so, the, the script, so Luke's point is the scriptures the Old Testament scriptures say that he must suffer as a martyr the point is you're missing the, you're missing the elephant here in the room you're not seeing, well I've told you over and over again, you're, you're ignoring what I'm saying, which I'm not quite surprised about, is that for Luke, Jesus did not, no, you're interrupting, you're interrupting, you're interrupting again. For Luke, Jesus did not die as an atoning sacrifice for sin. Now, no, hang on a second, he did die as an atoning sacrifice for sin in Mark, uh, in Mark 10.45, but Luke disagrees, and I happen to agree more with Luke when it comes to the understanding of Jesus' ministry. I, I, it's actually worse for you. Let me explain why. If you look at all the reasons, if you look at Jesus' teaching in Luke's Gospel, how are we saved? How are we justified before God? What must I do to be saved? All the answers are completely compatible with Islam, the teaching of the Quran. But they're not. If you look at the answers that Paul gives, hang on, I haven't finished. No, no, I have to stop you there. I, but I haven't finished. So, so, so you're saying I haven't finished. Islam teaches that the Christ had to suffer and rise no, no, from no, the no. dead, according no. to the scriptures. No, I didn't say that. You, no, you said that you're, you said yeah. that the teachings in Luke about are, what? About uh, what? On. About what? The teachings in Luke yes. are compatible with Islam. No. Luke teaches yeah. from the words of Je from the lips of Jesus that the Christ had to suffer and rise again. Mm. So if you're going to say that Luke's te what Luke portrays is compatible with Islam, then you have to say no. you, 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 you are. To thank goodness it's been recorded because you are deliberately ignoring and distorting what I said. No, what no, I said. No, I'm not. I'm well, let me explain. Saying, let me explain. I'm saying exactly by what no, you're not. Says. No, what I said was. So not saying, you're saying Luke doesn't say. No, no, you're, 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 you're misrepresenting what I say. Now let me no, answer. No, no, am I saying the Christ? Will you no, let I'm me? Not. Will I'm you let me answer? You're talking over me. Yes, which you've been doing all the time. We've both been doing that. Right. Now let me explain. I said, and you forgot conveniently. I said that Jesus' teaching in Luke about how, what must I do to be saved? I said it twice. Do you remember I said that? Thank you. See, this guy remembers. What, what, um, how am I justified before God? What is it, how, how am I forgiven by God? All of these the salvation issues is the same in Islam as in Luke. The idea that Jesus had to die as a martyr is not in Islam, I agree. Luke does 
suggest that. I agree. But in terms of how the Jesus gospel, the gospel message about what must we do to be saved, how we may right with God, how we obtain forgiveness of our sin, and so on, is the same as Islam. So Let me give you an example. So then why do you then take Let me give you an example. So why do you, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with your point. Well, Are you agreeing? That, I'm agreeing with he your agrees. Point. He teaches I'm Jesus is a Muslim prophet no, then. I'm agreeing with your point <laughs> that that's what you, you, you're you believe or say. So why then do you Let me demonstrate. Why do you I'll give you examples. Why do you only take some of what Luke says and not all of it? Why do you then take, oh, this is compatible with Islam if I only take these bits? Why do you not say, I can take Luke, why do you chop up Luke? Why do you say, I can only take bits of Luke and those are okay, but these other bits I can't? Right. Especially, you, as you said, from a historical perspective. Right. Historical right. perspective I'll, I'll come to that. Now, I'll come to that, but I want to focus, because you're getting off the subject again. Yeah, let, let, let me focus on this. What did Jesus teach in Luke, uh, and we'll compare that with the teaching of Paul, about all right, how we justify before God according to Jesus in Luke's Gospel. So coming back how, to the, the, the how, initial point we were making. How we, yes, exactly. How are we made right before God according to Luke's Jesus? is my question to you. How are we made right before God, justified before God, according to Jesus in Luke's Gospel? It's not in Paul. Paul disagrees with what well, I'm about I, to say. I would disagree with the question because the question. Just say, how can you disagree with the question? The question's a, a question. You can't disagree with it. Well, I'll, 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 I'll do what. I'll say, when I say I disagree with the question, I do the question in this sense. I don't simply take, say, right, I'm only going to say oh, what Luke says, I'm only going to say what Paul says. I take it, as I said, holistically, and I take it holistically. So I take it as a whole. Well, what, 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 what is the whole, the whole Bible, you mean? I took the whole New Testament, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. I know you don't. I'm that's practicing. The, that's the problem. That's the it problem. is. That's it is. No, you, I agree with you, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But let, let me, this question must be answered because yes. he is avoiding this point. Yeah. And, and I want to prove that the Jesus of Luke's Gospel is a Muslim prophet who teaches what Islam teaches about how we get to God. And I can give you a dozen examples off the top of my head of the teaching of Jesus, which is totally compatible with the, uh, the Hadith the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the teaching of God in the Quran. On. I want to. I disagree with your, your perspective. How you're can doing you disagree it? with what Luke says? No, 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 I tell you what I disagree with. He, he won't. He won't. He won't do it. I think what's happening here is whenever there's a specific topic and specific examples given for a specific topic, and when your it's your turn to respond to that, you make generic statements, okay. but you don't address that specific issue by giving. Allow me to finish the okay. point. So, without giving any specific examples. Uh, for example, how would you justify before God according to Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Luke is a very specific question, yeah. right? Now, it requires a specific answer. Rather than saying, yes, I do not the agree with the question, I tell you, I, right? I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, he says he I take the whole Bible, the whole Bible, the whole Bible, the if something is, yeah. 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 Something says drink wine and something says don't drink wine. This says what would what would people have? Especially to you, like you have contradiction only one way. Well, there are lots of contradictions in the Bible. Exactly. So he says he won't look at the detail. He won't look at the detail. So you can't take it as a whole. Then where does Jesus say? Don't talk about the Bible. Don't talk about the Bible. Well, tell me, where does he say that the only so, way to get salvation is by so him on, being sacrificed? So, you wouldn't answer that specific question. You put your interpretation into it but, and contradict your own statement you've just made. But when it comes to a specific question, rather than giving a specific answer to that specific question, you make that generic blanket statement that I take the whole Bible no, and I don't talk yeah, it up. Yeah. It's not a generic statement. That's, <coughs> that's my, saying my methodology. That's not a generic okay. statement. So, say, then, then try this for a methodology. Okay. Where does Jesus say, in the whole Bible, or, or at least in, in, in the Gospels, uh, uh, in, in the New Testament, that the only way to salvation is by believing I will die for your sins. There is no other way to get salvation or being. There is no other way to get justified before God. Let's put it this way. And why does he say, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many? Yeah, you say, you say that we're going around in circles here because he can, he can quote Mark 10 45, which he's just done. But my point, I'm, I, I've already, I made it clear where I'm, where I'm coming from. I'm coming in a position of what's called historical criticism. You're coming in a position of faith uh, as a Christian. I uh, don't interrupt. I'm, no, let I'm me. Sorry, I have to because I disagree with the caricature that you're coming from historical and that I'm coming from faith. Yes, I, 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 that, that's true. No, well, well, let me explain why I think that. Dichotomy. No, I think it's absolutely the case because historically you can look at, at Luke as uh, Luke's gospel as a book written by a dude called Luke who lived at a certain time, uh, who may or may not have known about Matthew's Gospel, 
who may or may not have known about John's gospel, who may not have known about, about John or whatever. Uh, and likewise for Matthew, written by some kind of dude who, who was a bloke. He didn't claim to be inspired by God like a prophet does. He just said, uh, uh, he didn't write in the first person, he wrote in the third person. He was writing about events. Now historically, we can look at all these as different works by individual human beings at different times, and we can compare and contrast them. Now compare this to the Quran. The Quran is, has a single author, even secular historians agree that the Quran is a single author, uh, purportedly given to one individual in one identifiable historical time period in Arabia in the in the sixth and seventh centuries. So we're not looking for multiple authors who wrote it in different places and different times. We must assume a unitary authorship because it came. Right? But, but the New Testament, the New Testament. This is this is, a, this is an issue that Christians don't always grasp fully. The Bible is a library of books. It's a library of books written by many different people over a thousand years or more. Uh, and, and, and Christians today are not even agree which books go in this Bible. The Catholics disagree with the Protestants who disagree with the Orthodox Church, who disagree with the Oriental Orthodox Churches, who disagree with the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. It has a canon twice as long as the one you've got. So they don't even agree on what books go in it. So we are at liberty as historians, if we're historians, to say, let's look at what Luke says as the individual man who wrote this gospel. Let's look at Matthew, what he says. And let's not just assume they all agree with each other. Hey, why should we? They, never, they may not have even met each other. And if we do that, so we notice... You, you they don't agree, then? No, I'm saying we have to see where the evidence leads us. Now, if we look at this, as I said before, scholars have noticed the level of the Greek, it looks as if there's a literary dependence going. This is not controversial. It really is not controversial. But he was right? disagreeing with them. Well, I know he was, but it's not controversial. But... <laughs> That, that doesn't explain the whole story. It doesn't, I'm not, I never explains everything. I'm simply saying that it's an interesting insight into the nature of the relationship between the four Gospels in this Bible. Now what this means is, if there is a, co a relationship going on and someone is dependent on someone else, we can therefore see how they edit what they have used. And the consensus is, virtually all this, even the London Bible College teach this, uh, King's College London, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, there's a consensus everywhere in all the major universities in the West on this, believe me there is, they would all agree that there's mark and priority, there's one or two scholars, there's one at Duke University, very respected scholar who doesn't agree, that's fine, but that's about, about Q, no, no he does agree with this, this is about the existence of Q, that's a different subject, forget what I just said. So what this means is, we can then see and observe, isn't it interesting, that in Mark 10.45 it says, Jesus says, uh, I have come, uh, the Son of Man did not come but as a uh, give his life as a rest for many. And then we look at Luke who used Mark, given all I just said, remember, behold, the verse is no longer there. No, 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 hang on, wait, no, let me finish, because, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. This, this, is, this is a really important point because Mark 10.45 is such an important statement, as I'm sure you would agree. Why would Luke, who used Mark, according to the consensus, you may reject it, you're free to do it, it's a free country. I happen to agree with that, I've looked at it in detail. As a, when I was a Christian, I agree with it. When I was an evangelical Christian like you, I still saw the logic and agree with it. As a Muslim, I still think it's the best explanation for all the evidence in the Bible. So, when we come there and we look, behold, 1045 in Mark is disappeared in the edited Mark that you, Luke uses in constructing his gospel. And the statement in Mark that thus he declared all foods clean, behold, is missing from Matthew's gospel when he gobbles up Mark and edits it. Now this tells us a huge amount because if a Jew to go around saying, oh, you can eat pork now, basically, it's a whopping great big thing. It's if this gentleman, you're Muslim, aren't you? Yeah. He went around saying, well, you can eat pork now, brothers. Yeah. Whoa, who are you? Uh, you know, you just don't do that. I mean, it's just unthinkable for a Jew to do that. Uh, Jesus did not do it according to Matthew. And we know Matthew is right because the early church, after Jesus' lifetime, continued to be Torah observant Jews. So they basically sided with Matthew over against Mark on this issue of Torah observance. So we can reconstruct a Jesus who is remarkably similar to the Islamic Jesus of the Quran, who was not God, who upheld the law, who did not believe in an intermediary between God and man, who did not believe that he had to die for anyone's sin to pay a price to be forgiven. Because all the teaching of Jesus in the synoptic gospels about how we're forgiven is by simple repentance to God. So, so you, you said Mark is, is prior to Luke, yes? Yeah. 
but I'm, I'm sure when you keep saying that um, what Jesus said about um, the Son of Man, that's not in Luke, but that's in Mark, which is the earlier gospel. Yes. Now you haven't demonstrated, you haven't, been, you haven't given me the, ver the passage where that occurs, that is delete, you, you, according to you, it's deleted from Luke. But let's go back well, to well, your... Well, well, let's let's go back to you can look it up, yeah, you can look it up. Do, do the Bible study when you're at home. Let's go, let's go back. <laughs> when you've got to you, writing, you're making a statement. When we go back to... Well, where is Mark 1045 in Luke? Can you show me where 1045 in Luke is? Why is it missing? I've been asking you to do that. No, it's not there. Can you show me the passage? Can you no, show me uh, the passage where it should be there? Uh, it's a serious point. We can sit down and have a coffee and we can look at these passages yeah. and I'll show you yeah. uh, the passage uh, well, in Mark. Yeah, but, 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 but I can't... Why I can't do it, it no. because the problem point is, as I was doing now, because if, if it bolsters your point, fine, but why can't you do The point now? is that the, the statement that Jesus died as, an, as a sacrifice for sin disagrees with what Luke believes about Jesus, no, hang on a second, good. and nowhere in Luke, in his gospel and in Acts, in the preaching in Acts, will you ever find anyone say that Jesus died as an atoning sacrifice for sin? Why? Because Luke doesn't believe that. He has he has uh, deleted that verse, uh, eliminated it from his account. Well, this is the conclusion that is inevitable if you accept Mark and priority. Do you agree with Mark and priority or not? I'm saying we have, when it comes to the Gospels, mm. we don't, first of all, we don't have written down, as in I wrote it this time, this time. The current theory mm. is of Mark and priority, yes. That's the current theory. We, you, have to, we have to state that as a theory. Do you know why they believe that? Do you, do you know why scholars say that they believe that? We have to state that the... I think part of the reason is because so much of uh, Mark appears in Matthew that to then write Mark after Matthew doesn't make sense. I think that's part of one of the reasons. But even so, we see that the early tradition says that Matthew came first. But even if we come, say, to Mark, and you're also making the claims well, not Jesus, Mark, that uh, we don't, can't see where God, where Jesus is God, etc. But if Mark is the earliest gospel, as you keep saying, and Mark has said, has Mark 10.45, then that means from the earliest, before before Matthew and before Luke, which you're saying, we have the earliest gospel saying that Jesus says he came as a ransom for many. So that would that would answer your question of atonement. Because yes, you're going to... How you, would it answer anything? I, 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 I missed the logic. Of where, where, how does it answer anything? Because, if it goes, because it comes up earlier in time. Well, yeah, as in, why, why do you say Jesus is not God? You're saying the gospels are saying that. No, no, we're talking, we're talking about 10.45, yeah. that that's he gave his lives a ransom yeah, many. and then about a minute ago you said about how we see uh, Muslim Jesus, who's not God, etc. Yeah. Because, 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 well, because in Luke's Gospel, Jesus is a prophet. He's portrayed as an Old Testament... Sorry, 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 no, hang on a second. Sorry, sorry. He's portrayed... Luke's Jesus is not portrayed as God, as Yahweh. He is portrayed as a prophet of God. And there are many examples where he claims that in the Gospel itself. It's not me saying this. He says he's a prophet in Luke's Gospel. He does not say that he is God incarnate. He does not claim to be the second person of the Trinity. He does not claim to be divine in Luke's Gospel. He does claim that uh, the words are put into his mouth in John. I'm not disputing that, but in Luke he's not. I think Luke is very close to Islamic Jesus because what he teaches is very Islamic and his Christology, who he is, is identical to what the Quran says about Jesus. He's much closer to Islam than your belief that God came to earth as a man and died for sins and all that. That's not what Luke teaches at all. As much so, closer so, to Islam. So to clarify your question, you're now saying that if we take only Luke, then we have a Muslim Jesus. But if we ignore Matthew, no, and Mark no, and I, I we think have. I think uh, Matthew emphasises Jesus' Torah observance as a good Jew much more than Luke does, and that is very historical and very compatible with Quran as well, which says he's, he's not come. He's only come as a uh, he's come as a prophet to Israel. He hasn't come as a Gentile prophet or someone to abolish the law. So again, that... that, that um, but, but he still had to obey the law according to Jesus in, in Matthew, but that's not the case in Mark. In Mark's gospel, Jesus says the food, uh, the food laws are abolished. So you get a contradiction between the gospels. All I'm saying is that uh, in many respects, Luke is very similar to Islam and Matthew in his Torah observance is very similar to Islamic Jesus. The one that is most dissimilar is John, uh, because you, here you have uh, a, a largely fictionalized account, certainly according to virtual scholars, where Jesus is now a divine being who comes to earth uh, and, and uh, says things like, I am the way, the truth, the life, before Abraham I was. Things he says and doesn't say anywhere else. He doesn't say in Luke or Matthew or, or Mark or anywhere in the Gospel, in, in Acts. 
This is a unique saying. If Jesus had gone around saying such amazing things, surely Luke, who said he had carefully investigated all these things from the beginning, would have noticed that he had actually said any of these things. But nowhere in the Gospels does Jesus say, uh, apart from John. Okay, so now, now you're saying if we take Luke and certain bits of Matthew, then we can make a Muslim Jesus. But if we take the Gospels as a whole, we can't. I've said what I've said. I'm not going to repeat myself. No, I'm just trying. I'm asking for clarification of your point. Well, I'm exhausted now about repeating well, myself over and over again. Well, what, 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 the, the, a question I would like. The question, the question I'd like to do, and I know you won't answer this because you refuse to answer it. If we take any random example of Jesus' teaching, say in Luke's Gospel, how are we justified before God? Now, what it means is. Just for it, how we're made right, how are we forgiven by God, yeah. according to the teaching of Jesus in Luke's Gospel. And this is my test case, my acid test case, my make or break, win or lose yeah. argument yeah. here. Yeah. So yeah. I, I now challenge you to say, according to Jesus in Luke's yeah. Gospel, yeah. how are we made right with God? Because I maintain that what Jesus teaches is the same as what the Quran teaches. Unless you can prove me wrong now in front of cameras. So I invite you now to disprove me. Well, I, I, I think I already have because... And here's the Bible. The question that I'm asking you, you you've, made, you've made a certain standard. You've said... Muslim Bible. you said, if I only take this bit, I can prove this. Anyone Why can't you answer the question? I am answering the way I want to. Uh, you're not going to answer the question then. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm saying that your question is wrong. The reason your How can it be wrong to ask what Jesus taught in, in Luke's Gospel? How can that be a wrong can question? Can I explain my it's, it's a bizarre thing to say. Can I explain it then? Unless we, we, we can extend the conversation here and you go, yes, I have. Well, your answer depends if you can, if you should take the Bible as a whole. Well, that, that's, that's, my, that's, that's what he's going to say. This is my point. My yeah. point is this. Yeah. But what, what Paul's question is this. Yeah. If I only take certain bits, yeah. only certain things, yeah. I can prove the Muslim Jesus. And, well, it's it's, funny, and it's funny. I'm just asking you, what did Jesus teach about the salvation? The bits that he so asking. Proves, yeah. Or bits that he feels line up with him. I'm saying we take Jesus as a whole. Well, well, I have can you take Jesus as a whole? But you can't. Jesus the Gospels don't agree with each other. You can't take it as a whole. The Gospels disagree with each other, so you can't just assume they all say the same. Matthew, 